Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received five newly appointed ambassadors of Bahrain. The ambassador to China, Dr. Mohammed Ghassan Sheikho. The ambassador to Indonesia, Ahmed Abdullah Al Hajri. The ambassador to Thailand, Muna Abbas Radhi. The ambassador to France, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. And the ambassador to Brazil, Bedra Abbas Al Hlebi at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness congratulated the ambassadors on their appointment within their respective positions. Positions, wishing them success in performing their duties. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of Bahrain's ambassadors to strengthen bilateral relations with various countries to serve common interests. His Royal Highness highlighted the integral role played by the Kingdom of Bahrain's diplomatic missions to enhance the Kingdom's credentials across various international and regional forums. His Royal Highness noted the importance of strengthening cooperation with other countries to expand Bahrain's horizons for further coordination across various fields and to achieve growth and prosperity. For their part, the new ambassadors expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and their appreciation on his on this commitment to supporting the Kingdom's foreign policy. The ambassadors pledged to strengthen the Kingdom's diplomatic relations to meet common aspirations. The meetings was also attended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Latif bin Rashid Zayani. The Royal Highness Consort of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, has expressed her deep gratitude to all well wishers on the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the Council. In a statement, Her Royal Highness expressed thanks to everyone who joined the celebration marking this auspicious occasion. She added that it is a national milestone that holds a special significance within the comprehensive development process during the reign of His Majesty King Hamad. Bin Isa Al Khalifa. Her Royal Highness praised the great interaction of official, private, civil, and media institutions that voiced support for Bahraini women and demonstrated responsibilities towards the evolving status of women. She added that the facts and figures regularly published show the extent of change and development of women's participation in the kingdom. Princess Abika stated that the commitment of these institutions is also clear in their programs, initiatives, plans, and policies as they endeavor to achieve the required balance and reduce gaps that may affect the integration of women's and family needs into national legislation and within government policies and their participation in social societal affairs. Her Royal Highness reiterated the Council's commitment to its institutional approach based on the values of justice, partnership and competitiveness that Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030 seeks to achieve with the highest levels of prosperity for Bahraini families under the focus and care of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who is exerting sincere and commendable efforts to ensure Bahraini women are today among the highest government priorities. Her Royal Highness also expressed her deep appreciation to the honorable women of Bahrain who are doing their utmost to carry out their national responsibilities and family duties in the best way. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW Secretary General, Ahal Al Ansari. The Minister congratulated her on the 20th anniversary of the SCW, commending the Council's pioneering role in boosting the status of Bahraini women. Sheikh Salman underlined the pioneering role of the SCW under the presidency of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in empowering Bahraini women at all levels. He also reviewed with the SCW. Secretary General, the Bahraini model in the field of equal opportunities and gender balance, in addition to the SAW's role in strengthening women's needs in development, in addition to the indices of the National Plan to empower Bahraini women. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, received the four winners of the Arab Youth Council Award for Integ Integrated Development for Distinguished Arab Youth in its 12th edition. The four winners were honoured in Egypt, among 30 other winners from Arab countries. The award aims to honour distinguished Arab youth for their role in supporting their countries in various fields. Ahmedan congratulated the winners at both the individual and institutional level. The Individual Work Award was awarded to Dr. Ali Ahmed Al-Kharfouch, who won 
won second place in the field of sports awareness and Tahal Bashir Medini who won first place in the field of voluntary work. In the Institutional Work Award, the Secretary General of the Bahrain International Federation of Business and Professional Women, Khairiya Abdullah Dashti, who won first place in the field of entrepreneurship and the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Al Khalidiyah Youth Association, Ibrahim Rashid Naim, who won first place in the field of social work. The Ministry of Education announced that more than 45,000 students have registered for in-person learning system for the new academic year. The Ministry noted that the registration will continue until August the 29th, after which all students who do not wish to opt for an in-person learning will be transferred to the remote learning system. The Kingdom of Bahrain expressed regret for the outcome of the bilateral relations between Morocco and Algeria, which led to the severing of diplomatic ties between the two countries. The Foreign Ministry affirmed Bahrain's keenness on promoting Arab relations and the need to settle continuous issues between the two countries through dialogue, according to what was stated in the speech of His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco, to open a new chapter in the Moroccan-Algerian relations in a manner that promotes the strength of relations between brothers achieves the interest of the two countries and preserves the security and stability of the region. The permanent mission of Bahrain to the United Nations in Geneva participated in the special extraordinary session held by the UN Human Rights Council to discuss the situation of human rights in Afghanistan. The mission presented on behalf of the GCC countries a statement delivered by the Kingdom's permanent representative to the UN and the current president of the Gulf Group, Dr. Yusuf Abdul Karim Bouchiri. Dr. Bouchiri expressed the GCC's concern over the escalating violence in Afghanistan, calling all parties to work to achieve stability and security, preserve lives and property, and work to achieve the hopes and aspirations of the Afghani people and prioritize their interests through a comprehensive political and reconciliation process. In line with medical research, the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus highlighted the importance of taking a booster dose within a maximum of six months after receiving the second dose of the Pfizer, BioNTech or AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Data from a study showed a decrease in the effectiveness of the Pfizer, BioNTech vaccine in the month following the second dose from 88% to 74%, while the effectiveness of the COVID Shield AstraZeneca vaccine decreased from 77 to 67% after four to five months after taking the second dose. The study was based on data from more than one million individuals who received these vaccines. The study by Britain's Zoe COVID also showed that the protection provided by vaccines for the elderly and healthcare workers may drop to less than 50% by winter. The task force noted that a booster dose can increase efficiency levels and enhance the body's immunity against COVID-19 and its variants, as well as reducing severity of symptoms and mortality rates in case of infection. Those who meet the required criteria are encouraged to register for a booster dose by visiting the Ministry of Health's website healthalert.gov.ph or via the Be Aware application. The national vaccination campaign, however, continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,138,225 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,081,480 had taken the second, and 246,335 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 973 with 90 recoveries, 130 registered new cases and one death. 43 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 68 are contacts of active cases and 19 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.